one of the world's best value red wine regions. In this video, I'll detail some places that bring tremendous value for under $10 a bottle. Now, if you're not in the US, no worries. These are regions that present fantastic value all around the world. Thanks for clicking on this video. I'm Bob Polinski, Master of Wine. I've spent the last 40 plus years in the wine trade, a good part of that tracking down the best values in wine. In this video, I'll detail three regions that bring tremendous value, and I think the last one may be a bit of a surprise. By value, I don't mean simply cheap wine. The world is awash in cheap wine that is oftentimes just god-awful. What I'm focusing in on are wines that have a true sense of place, they're consistent from year to year, and in many cases, they can more than hold their own against much higher priced wines. Now, it was tough to come up with this list and to keep it only to, to three regions. So this was a, a bit of a tough chore, but the opinion here is solely my own. If you have some thoughts on it, I'd love to hear from you. Please post your comments down below. I try to follow up on each and every comment. As I started to work down the range of options, it became clear there was a handful of points that popped up time and time again. All of these regions are low profile. They don't see a huge amount of tourists. They're away from large urban centers. Uh, the cost of living generally is not all that high. These are places that embrace wine. It's part of the local culture and they drink a lot of it. Also, in many cases, they've embraced local and indigenous grape varieties. And the last point ties to the yield in the vineyards. And this is really a, a major point. In many cases, you'll find vines that are older. Older vines typically produce less fruit of better quality. Therefore, that provides the raw material for what's going into your wine glass. Bottom line is, oftentimes, that'll give you a better glass of wine. In no particular order, the first region for outstanding red wine value is Abruzzo. The wine to be tasted is the Massiarelli Montepulciano di Abruzzo. Abruzzo is a region that's about a three hour drive east of Rome. It's an ancient wine area. It's one of the largest wine producing areas in Italy, but much of the production has been dedicated to entry level price points. Oftentimes it would be the wine you'd find on the bottom shelf in a grocery store, would be the entry level, on many wine lists, that image is quickly changing. The focus now is much more on improving vineyard techniques and methods in the winery, and there's been a huge uptick in quality. The wine that I'm tasting, the uh, Montepulciano di Abruzzo from Massiarelli, this is just a, a benchmark standard for what this wine can deliver. Now, this is a producer that sells in about 50 different markets around the world, so you should have a good chance of finding it. And just for clarity, Montepulciano is the grape variety that goes into this wine. Now, there is there is a bit of Sangiovese grown in this area as well, but that plays a very minor role. Now, the wines generally, when they're youthful, as this one is, it'll have a purple color to it, a, a vibrant color as well. Aromatics is that dark cherry character. That's one of the benchmark call-outs for this grape variety. Many times you'll find a bit of a savory, spicy note to it as well, a little coffee characteristic, which is what this one has. But I love the aromatics on this wine. It's just bright, really exuberant, fresh, and very expressive. On the palate, there's good weight. Now, within Montepulciano di Abruzzo, you can find styles that are a bit lighter, which is what this one is, typically around that 12, 5, 13% alcohol. There are others that have more weight, more concentration. And as you move up the scale, many times you'll find the wines will have more oak influence. This has none of the oak influence. So what you're getting is just that primary fruit character. The tannins are evident, but they're rather moderate and level. And the wine does have some decent ageability, but it does drink very well when it's young. So Abruzzo is definitely a place to look for. I think in the coming years, you'll see those prices tick up. And this is the perfect time to check out the wines from Abruzzo. The next region for outstanding red wine value is Carriena, which is located near the Pyrenees in northeast Spain. So this region can be a little bit confusing. You have the region name of Carriena, and you also have a grape variety by the same name. Now that grape variety in other places of the world goes by a number of names, but oftentimes it's called Carignan. But the primary grape variety that grows here is actually Garnacha. So many of the wines will be blends of Garnacha and Carriena. 
but uh, the wines have an immense amount of depth, really rich, ripe. This is an area that is known to have a lot of old vines. Here's an example of a very old bush pruned vine. This is a self-supporting system that has no trellis. It's a common sight within this region. Now, one of the factors that plays in is because of the age of the vines and just the area in which these vines grow, yields tend to be very low. So you do get that very concentrated full style wine. The one I'm trying is one I picked up at a Trader Joe's. Uh, it's a, a name called Oxte. Uh, absolutely love this wine. It's made again from Garnacha and Carienia. But uh, this wine, very inexpensive. If you saw some of my past videos, you may recall I reviewed the 2021 vintage, which I thought was just outstanding. This is the 2022. If you don't have a Trader Joe's around where you're at, no worries. I'll include some other options down in the description below because this is a place that has a good amount of fantastic values. The wine is moderately deep in color, but I love the aroma. The aroma, you get this, this savory, spicy, red fruit character. It's a little bit peppery. The, the aromatics from the wines from this area are just fantastic. The wines do tend to be rather full bodied because this is a hotter region that has a long growing season. This one is up at 14%, which is very typical for, for this region. Generally, the wines will have a minimal amount of oak. In this case, the wine has zero oak. It definitely has that ripeness. It's, it's very rich, full, very soft on the tannins. But this wine has a lot going on for an inexpensive price. So if you're interested in wines that have that savory, a bit rustic character, this is a fantastic place to search out. The final region for outstanding red wine value is Mendoza, Argentina. This last region may come as a bit of a surprise, and if you'd like to give me some grief, bring it. I think I can take it, but hear me out. My feeling is Mendoza has become a victim of its own success. Over the last several decades, their export markets have boomed. But oftentimes the wines can come across as very commoditized and corporatized and homogenized and just flat out boring. Now, there are many exceptions. You need to look for these wines. Now, the ones that I prefer mostly are the smaller artisanal properties. Now, certainly the heavy focus is on Melbeck, but Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc increasingly, even though that's generally will be over the $10 mark. Uh, and Bernarda, which is oftentimes part of red blends, can be very interesting. But for this video, I was looking for something that would have uh, some broad availability. And the wine that I'm showing is the Kirkland Melbeck. This is from Costco, the 2021 vintage. This is made by Brokel, which is a part of a family that's under the Trapiche umbrella. Trapiche uh, it's the largest producer in Argentina, and some of their wines I'm, I'm not all that thrilled with, but I think they've done a nice job with this wine. It has all the telltale characteristics of a solid, well-made, entry-level Melbeck. The color is purple. It extends to the rim of the glass. Just by the appearance, you can see this wine does not have a lot of dilution. There's good, good substance, good weight to the wine. In terms of the aromatics, it has the telltale black fruit plum characteristic this wine also has a bit of oak which is quite surprising based on the low price point point. and on the palate there's good weight uh, it's solid from start to finish again it's, it has a good amount of primary fruit you get a little of that secondary characteristic from from the oak tannins are very soft and the fruit is ripe you can tell this is made with some good quality raw material uh, the back label shows the alcohol level at 14%, which is actually quite typical for the wines from Mendoza. So this is an excellent example that many of you should have access to. I'll also provide a list of other smaller producers you can search out as well. There you have it, the three regions that I believe bring the best red wine value in the world today. If you try any of the wines, I'd love to hear from you. Please post it down below. If you have any questions about any of these wines, I'll also try to follow up on that as well. Please do check out a couple of links to my other videos. I'll have one posted for Montepulciano di Abruzzo. It'll give you the full story of what's happening there. I'll also include another link to a video on some of the current releases from Kirkland. If you've not yet subscribed to this channel, please do so. Hit that like button. 
definitely hit the notification bell. It'll keep you up to speed on all things happening with this channel. I appreciate you staying around to the end of this video. Hope to see you again before too long. And until next time, cheers.